How's it going my bakers? Hope you've had a great day so far. Welcome back to another episode of The Principles of Baking. Today we're going to talk about scalding. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. Scalding is an old European bread making method. It is performed by mixing part of the flour in a recipe with boiling water and then letting that mix sit for several hours before adding it to the final dough. It is also adopted and widely used in Asia where it's known as Yudane. I've made a video previously in which I compared the Yudane and the Tangzhong methods. Whereas those are mostly used for white flour breads, a scald is actually more commonly used in rye bread recipes. Scalding and yudane both involve exactly the same steps of preparation. I just thought it would be a good idea to make a video describing the method in detail. You can find the Tangzhong and yudane video in the Principles of Baking playlist. Okay, let's get right to it. We'll make two sets of breads today, starting with a simple white loaf. On the left, we have the ingredients for the base dough. It has white bread flour, water, yeast and salt. On the right, we have the recipe for the scalded dough. It also contains flour, water, yeast and salt, but part of the flour will be used separately, which will mix with part of the water, and that will be the scald. Since this method is commonly used for rye bread, that will be the subject of the second comparison. Same as before, on the left, we have the base dough, on the right, we'll have the dough with the scald. Both recipes will contain whole grain rye flour, white bread flour, water, caraway seeds, yeast, salt and black treacle. And these are just random examples that I came up with. You could use the scalding method in pretty much any bread dough recipe. And during this video, I'll tell you how to convert your recipe to be made with a scald. But first things first, let's scald some flour. The name of the process describes it perfectly. We are scalding the flour with boiling water. The Yudana method commonly suggests mixing your white flour with boiling water at a 1 to 1 ratio. But that can make it too dry sometimes. I would go with a ratio of 1 to 1.4, flour to water. Rye flour absorbs water a lot better, so it should be mixed at a ratio of 1 to 3. A regular whole wheat flour should mix at a 1 to 2 ratio. These ratios are of course not set in stone. They've just worked for me so far, that's why I'm passing them on. Feel free to experiment, see what works for you and the flour that you're using. As ever, this is not a recipe video, it's a comparison video. So I will not be talking you through the steps too much here. While I'm making the bread, I'll talk about the scalding method. You can clearly see what I'm doing anyway, without any descriptions. The breads will always be in the same order. On the left will be the base dough, and on the right will be the one with scald. But what does scalding actually achieve? This method is mainly used for extending the shelf life of the bread, but it also improves the texture of the bread. We are essentially cooking the flour as we mix it with boiling water. The starch in the flour gets gelatinized. During this process, liquid is absorbed by the starch, which makes it swell up. The swollen starch can hold more water. It's not just good at absorbing water, it's also good at holding on to it. It allows for the hydration of the dough to be raised, while still achieving the same volume in the final bread. The more water your dough can hold, the longer the bread will take to dry out. And that is how we extend the shelf life of the bread using a scald. Another benefit for using a scalding method, especially for wheat flour breads, is that the boiling water damages the proteins in the flour, which weakens the gluten structure. It makes the dough looser and the final bread lighter. When used in a wheat bread dough, it has a similar effect to an egg yolk, which makes it a great alternative for vegan baking. It is said that fermentation can also be affected by scalding, although I have personally not noticed this yet. The basic idea is that the starch gets damaged as we add the boiling water to the flour, and because it is the enzymes in the flour that convert starches to sugars, which the yeast feeds on, damaging the starch beforehand should give the enzymes more to work with. This could be more effective in whole grain flour breads, because whole grain flour contains more enzymes. But again, I have not noticed accelerated fermentation when using a scald, and even if there is a difference, it's negligible. But there is one more effect that scalding brings. It promotes browning of the crust. So the crust of a bread made with a scald will usually have a richer color. That's about it on the effects of scalding. Scalded bread can hold more water, it'll take longer to dry out, it'll have a softer crumb and a browner crust. Sounds like there's almost no good reason not to use it. I guess we should talk about how to use it now. Converting any recipe is pretty straightforward. I will explain it in detail. Don't worry about remembering all the numbers here. I'll have them written down in the blog post linked below the video. There are a few things to consider. First things first, you want to decide how much flour you want to use in your scald. Generally, 10 to 20 percent is a good range. Because using the scalding method allows for a higher hydration, we must increase the hydration of our base recipe. The increase will be different depending on the flour that you're using. The hydration of a white wheat flour bread should be increased by around 10 percent. Whole wheat flour should get about a 15 percent increase, and rye flour 20 percent or more. If we don't change the hydration, the bread will come out a lot denser and smaller than it should be. Another thing to note, which I mentioned earlier, is the ratio that the scald is mixed at. White bread flour, 1 to 1.4, whole wheat, 1 to 2, 
and Rai 1 to 3. Another thing to consider is temperature control. Because the skull makes up a significant portion of the dough mass, it will have a considerable effect on the final temperature. If your kitchen is warm, you may want to cool down the skull before using it. Or if it's cool, you can leave it at room temperature. The scald can be used as soon as it cools down. It can even be prepared the whole day ahead of time. There are some methods which suggest keeping the scald at 65 degrees Celsius for several hours. That should help the starch gelatinize even better. I've personally not tried it yet, because I can't figure out of a practical way of doing it. I guess it could be left in the oven with the light on, but that'll be a topic for another video. Because I think most home bakers are not going to want to bother with that. One more thing to note is that the dough made with a scald will be stickier. But as you can see, I used the no-knead method for this recipe. It made my life a lot easier in this case. So now that we know all the facts, we can talk about how to calculate the recipe. The base recipe of the white bread that I'm making now contains 250 grams of flour, 160 grams of water, 3 grams of yeast, 5 grams of salt. The hydration of the base dough is 64%, so the hydration of the dough with the scald should be increased by 10%. At a hydration of 74%, it will contain 185 grams of water. I decided to use 20% of the total flour in the scald. 20% of 250 grams is 50 grams. The scald was mixed at a 1 to 1.4 ratio. And that is 50 grams of flour, 70 grams of boiling water. So with all those numbers in mind, we now know the final formula of the bread with the scald. The main dough contains 200 grams of flour, 115 grams of water, 3 grams of yeast, 5 grams of salt. The scald contains 50 grams of flour and 70 grams of boiling water. So the total recipe is 250 grams of flour, 185 grams of water, 3 grams of yeast, 5 grams of salt. The only difference in ingredients between this and the original is that we increased the water by 25 grams. As you can see, the breads gain the same volume, but the one with the scald is a lot softer. You can see how much drier the other one is. The scald is a clear winner here. It'll give your basic white bread a huge improvement. The rye breads also look like they gained the same volume. The one with the scald has more cracks on the surface. The hydration of this bread was increased by 20%. The hydration of the original recipe was 84%. So the one with the scald had a hydration of 104%. That is quite a lot of water. The texture of the crumb looks quite similar. Both breads are nice and bouncy. But the one with the scald does feel heavier and is definitely moister than the other one. So whilst the scald made the wheat bread a lot softer, here it's mostly responsible for keeping it moister. Perhaps keeping a rice cold at 65 degrees for a couple of hours would have produced some different results here. And if anyone's here tried that method, please let us know down in the comments. I want to hear about your experiences and the methods that you used. What is the best method for keeping the scald at a constant temperature for several hours? I can say that the quote-unquote quick scalding method works great. It makes the bread softer and it keeps it fresh for longer and it does it all by itself. But if you want to supercharge the effects of a scald, you should try using it alongside some of these ingredients. Egg plus scald is like scald squared, if that makes sense. Add a little bit of butter and perhaps some sugar to it, and you will end up with the softest bread you will ever make. You can find a few good examples of this on my channel. One being the cold fermented Udana whole wheat loaf. This is made with a scald plus two egg yolks. You can clearly see the texture of it. it is so light and soft. And here's another example, my Udana burger buns. These are by far the softest burger buns I've ever made. The recipe contains egg, scald, sugar and butter. You can find links to all these recipes and more in the blog post below. Before we finish, here's another one for you. Cold fermented whole wheat breakfast rolls. These things are super soft and bouncy. That's all thanks to the scald. The best thing about these rolls is that they ferment overnight. So all you need to do on the next day is bake them whilst you're preparing breakfast. All of this is not about my recipes. Because you understand this method now, you can create your own recipes. And I really hope you do. So what do you think this method? Where do you use it? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.